going on everybody in today's video what are we doing and what are we talking about uh it's an update video nothing special just a cool show and tell video for a cool friday figured you guys would get a kick out of a couple of things that i have to show you and uh, i have to admit these items that i'm going to show you one of them is beyond rare and strange uh unusual uh would be the word uh, to use for this uh, so today I'm going to be showing you guys a couple of really cool accessories for the Nintendo Game Boy. And again, I have to say that uh, they're unusual, unusual items. They're not uh, the norm uh, type of add-ons that you would expect uh, to be used with a Nintendo Game Boy. Um, now, there were some, you know, kind of unusual items. There was like a, apparently a type of interface that you could use for programming a, a sewing machine. Now I will admit that that's kind of an unusual thing, but uh, one unit that I have in particular is quite uh, unusual. And uh, I, I would bet that a lot of you have not heard of this uh, type of interface for the Nintendo Game Boy. So I'm gonna bust it out. I'm gonna start with the first one that I have. It is not crazy unusual, but it's pretty, you know, pretty rare. Uh, so this is one of the modules here. So I'm not sure, some of you might be familiar with it. It was a special programming cartridge for uh, the Aprilia uh, make of uh, motorcycle uh, slash scooters. And uh, it was called the DiTech interface. It's a special interface cartridge that's used to program the engine control units, so the ECU module, it's a little like an engine computer that these scooters would have uh, inside, you know, the setup of the engine. And you could essentially tweak the computer and, you know, calibrate, uh, you know, how you would want the engine to run and tweak it so that you could optimize the engine efficiency. So you could use this device while your unit is in the garage and you got it set up and you're working on it. You hook this unit up to a Game Boy, plug it into the engine control module, apply some power, and then you can go in and tweak the settings and then save those settings to the engine control module in its internal memory. And then once that's done, you disconnect it and then you go about your business running uh, your little scooter unit and it's all optimized. So it was, you know, again, this is pretty unusual. It's not your average thing. So I'll bust it out and show you. So there's a serial RS-232 cable here. And then you have the cartridge, which is here, and a special little adapter. This is the cartridge here. So hopefully you guys can see this. I may have to pop up a, an image there to get a clear picture of what it looks like. So that's the cartridge there. And it has a special interface cable with a small little DIN connector uh, on the end. So you essentially have this little cartridge and you insert that into your Game Boy. And then this connector here attaches to a special connector that you interface as such. And then this little plug here connects as the standard connector for the engine control units on the Aprilia scooters. And so then that would connect to the little computer module and the onboard menus for this device would then allow you to go in and tweak uh, and customize the engine settings or improve the efficiency of how the engine was running. And, you know, so again, it was a kind of a, a cool kind of unique accessory that, you know, a lot of people were after this device. So whenever they would pop up on eBay, bang, they would just be sold very quickly. You could actually remove this connector for the ECU module and attach a serial RS-232 interface for a Windows PC. And you would interface that to the cartridge cable. And you could just plug that in like this. And then that would allow you to connect the cartridge to your Windows PC and perform firmware updates or different types of interfacing and application that would run on the Windows PC. And you could go in and tweak the settings for this uh, cartridge. Now, normally we would just insert the Aprilia cartridge into a Game Boy like this. However, today I'm going to insert it into my Intelligent Systems AGB capture device. 
Now this was a development unit that developers used and what it does is it allows you to capture the Game Boy screen and record that onto a video source or capture it onto a computer. So I'm going to use this today and it allows me to capture the Game Boy screen so that we can see things a little bit better. So when you first turn on the unit, uh, you have the Game Boy screen and then the Ditec interface uh, is shown there and it shows you the firmware version number. Next, the main selection screen loads and as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different options that we can select by just using the directional pad on the Game Boy. Now there's quite a few different menus and different options that we can select and retrieve different pieces of information about the ECU unit. Uh, now there's one main feature that this cartridge provides to uh, users that would purchase these devices and that is to lift different engine restrictions or certain types of engine locks uh, that prevent the engine from performing in a certain way. And so this unit was actually able to go in and lift those restrictions and allow the engine to perform uh, in, a, in an optimized way. So it's no doubt that these units were highly sought after when they were being sold online. Now I have done a full hardware demo on this AGB capture device. So for those of you that are interested in checking that out, link is above and it's also in the description. So pretty unusual. I don't know how many of you have actually heard of this, uh, but I thought, you know, this would be something cool to share with you guys. And it was a unit that I had acquired a while back. This belongs to a buddy of mine, and I just bored it to show you guys. I figured you'd get a kick out of it. So, pretty cool. So the next unit that I have to show you, this is the one that is pretty, pretty unusual. Uh, to say the least. So I don't know how many of you guys have actually heard of this, but it's pretty, pretty rare. <laughs> so here it is. So this is called the iCard Pro uh, cartridge for the Nintendo Game Boy. As it's shown on the cartridge here, what this is, is a transceiver radio system as part of a real-time racetrack information communication system. So it's all essentially telemetry information that's being sent to and from these little cartridges when you're at a racetrack. So just imagine that, pretty cool, pretty unusual. I don't know how many people have actually heard of these, uh, but they're pretty cool. And it's made by iCardUS.com. That was the company, that was the webpage that you had it. So essentially you would have your little Game Boy, you would show up to you know the racetrack and you know the races would be getting set up to go and they would be handing out these little modules and signing them out you would have to go up to the cache and you would register and sign one of these out and they would assign a serial number to you know whatever account you had because you had did have to return these so you would just insert it into the game boy like this and it would plug into the back of the game boy like that and you could then uh you know boot it up and there would be different menus that you could use and interface with to receive that information from all the races that were happening. These iCard units would have to be connected and communicating with what they called a TNS system or a timing and scoring system. So this was essentially like a radio transmission set up in a computer with a radio broadcasting uh, antenna. And they would have these installed and set up at the racetrack. And this was like a secondary, uh, you know, radio communication unit uh, that would work and communicate on the same frequencies as these iCard modules. So you have to admit that this is a pretty unique, pretty rare device for the Nintendo Game Boy. Again, I don't know how many people have heard about this, but it's pretty unusual. And I had a couple of buddies that mentioned, they were like, hey, Jer, if you could figure out, you know, the transmitter signals that are, you know, going to and from these little iCard Pro cartridges, you know, it'd be a pretty awesome interfacing project to try and communicate with this device. I'm not sure exactly what the frequency is that these use, but you know, if it's in the megahertz range, even if it is in the gigahertz range, you know, you could hook up a spectrum analyzer, monitor those signals, and you know, try to decipher uh, what's going on there and figure that communication out would be pretty interesting. 
So I figured we'd hook up the iCard to my AGB capture unit, same as we did before, and then we can actually boot it up and check out what the interface screen looks like. So when we power it up, we have the Game Boy logo, and there we have the iCard start screen. Now, unfortunately because we are not connected to the TNS system, that's the timing and scoring system, that's part of the racetrack infrastructure and that broadcasting antenna, uh, there's no information for us to receive, so there's nothing really shown on the screen here, uh, except some basic controls and uh, we're able to just control the widescreen mode with the standard Game Boy controls, left and right. Uh, now I did go online and find some of the menus and the screens that uh, the system would normally provide if it was actually communicating with the TNS system. So as you can see here, we have some track information, control information. Uh, we have the driver info, the schedule, and some just basic instructions there for operating uh, the iCard. And here you can see some lap times that would be captured during a race. So pretty awesome, pretty cool little unique device. So figured I would share that with you guys. And uh, you know, for, for those of you that have actually heard of these, you know, let me know in the comments. I'd be really curious to know if you guys have actually heard of this or if it's something new that you've seen. So pretty cool, pretty awesome. So that is the end of today's video, everybody. I wanna give a huge shout out, as always, to my supporters. You guys are awesome, and I thank you for helping support my channel here, allowing me to make all this cool content. For those of you that are interested in becoming a supporter to Behind the Code, uh, please visit my website, and that is behindthecode.ca and you can find the supporters link there. As always, to my followers, you guys are amazing. And just thank you for visiting my channel and checking out the content that I've been posting. And it's really awesome getting all the positive feedback. You know, you guys leaving some comments there for me, mentioning how you're enjoying the content. That's really awesome. I really, really appreciate those comments. It's uh, definitely motivating. And it's, you know, getting me to think up of, you know, new cool things to show you guys. Uh, that you might find fun and interesting. You know, if I find them fun and I think they're cool, you guys seem to be on the same page and you guys are digging the content too. So, you know, that's awesome. So that's the video today, everybody. Uh, hit the like and subscribe if you can. Always appreciated. And we will see you in the next video. Take it easy and bye for now. Ciao.